Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? Well, I came home and I found something on my front steps. This little package right here. So, it's a spy camera. Something my friend said one time. Said, hey, your spy camera came. So, whenever anything shows up in the mail, it's always a spy camera to me. So, uh, I was wondering what it was and I realized something had shipped out a while ago and I didn't expect to get mine for a little while because of where I live and because of where it was shipping from. But I look here and it says, what's in here? Books and dice. And so I know what it is. And you probably already know what it is too because you've seen the title of this video. But I'm going to open the sucker up here with this really evil looking knife and see what I get. So what am I going to get here? Yeah, let's see. Uh -huh. Yes, it is. I don't know if you let's, can see this. Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. This is what I've been waiting for for a little while. I backed this Kickstarter um, a little while ago. Not really sure when the Kickstarter actually showed up. Um, and I received the PDF quite some time ago and actually read it. And there was a little bit of a delay in, in bringing this out. This is Satan's Playground, an expansion for All for One Regime Diabolique. Uh, and there was a, a delay in shipping it out, which Wiggy was very forthcoming about because the dice uh, got like delayed due to customs, and it wasn't their fault. It was some bizarre thing that happened. But I got a bunch of dice, and so I got uh, I think I got some extra dice here. So I've got myself 30 of these great Ubiquity uh, style dice. They're not they're not officially Ubiquity dice, but they are D6s, which have been turned into D2s, and so they have the stunning fleur de lis and then the blank sides. So these are, these really pop out too. I, I like like the way these look. They're pretty cool. So I'd be pretty pumped to play some all for one with these dice. So what the heck is Satan's Playground anyway? Sounds pretty ominous, doesn't it? Well, all for one is set during the Thirty Years' War. Now it's set in France. It's set in Paris for the most part. Uh, there's expansion books like Paris Gothique, which I have. Uh, the Richelieu's Guides. A lot of great stuff in there. But you you play musketeers. This expands the game uh, into different characters, characters that are not musketeers. Uh, and particularly, this takes place in Germany. Now, it has information, I believe, uh, about the other countries. I haven't read this in a little while. Um, but uh, it's a very, very dark version of that game. In fact, Ubiquity has a, um, a few different... Um, levels of like how pulpy it is and it depends on like how much style is worth and here is is a darker tone you, there's no it's not an absence of style because you can play it that way as well but the default um, method of using this game if I recall correctly is to make uh, everything more expensive so style costs more like you need to spend two style points to get a die uh, all that sort of thing so it's it's tough but there is um, yeah in fact the characters are called survivors there's a great little uh, um, section here on the moral stance. The Thirty Years' War is a prolonged series of brutally cam brutal campaigns that utterly ravaged the Holy Roman Empire. War is always brutal, but the ongoing conflict takes a greater toll on the civilian population than most wars that have come before. It is an ugly fact that the barbaric torture, wanton destruction, massacres of innocents, murder, rape, and devil worship are ever present in Satan's playground. And goes on a little bit, a little further here. Whereas All for One portrays musketeers on the side of good, the need to survive in Satan's playground eventually wears down the noblest soul. So, there's kind of a, a, a different moral stance in here. But, very, very cool. Like I said, it's been a little while since, since I've read this, but uh, it goes, it gives a lot of history in here, gives a lot of the setting, um, gives you a lot of information. This is a great section on diseases. Here, I remember, like, uh, you know, I was talking to Anthony because Anthony is, uh, Boyd is actually the line editor on this. And he was telling me as he was editing it, like, you know, we were talking about disease or something like that. It's like, you wouldn't believe the diseases that are in here. They're, they're wor it's worse than the stuff that you'd find in the first edition Dungeon Master's Guide for, for advanced D&D. &D. And it is. It's, pre it's pretty cool flavor stuff in here. But the game isn't all doom and gloom, although there's quite a bit of interesting stuff in here. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of hot to play this, and so I was really excited to see the exp expansion come out. And it's funny because it reminds me of uh, something that just happened. Now, when I, um, when I started playing Lamentations of the Flame Princess, I really wasn't into the, the default setting. And that game, the default setting uh, that James Edward Raji pr uh, decided for his game was also Thirty Years' War Europe, it's, it's particularly Thirty Years' War Germany. 
And that's something I've gotten more and more interested in uh, based on playing all for one, to be quite honest with you, and really kind of getting into that, uh, that time period. And then I actually played some Lamentations uh, doing that same thing. This is very tangential, but, you know, one of the uh, things that I asked Raji about um, was uh, how come you chose that as your default setting? And he said, you know, to be honest with you, it is probably the worst time to be alive on the planet Earth. <laughs> and, you know, and it's if you want to have a, a horror game, what better place to have it than that? And so there's definitely some, some supernatural horror involved in all for one regime diabolique. And while Paris can be, you know, lots of flash and lots of smash and, and daring do and swashbucklery, you know, in Germany, Germany just had a bad time of it. I remember reading this book and, and getting more of an, uh, an education in just how horrific it was. So, sounds like a lot of fun to play, doesn't it? But, <laughs> you know, after all that, I'm really pumped to get this. This is a great, great product. I believe it is probably going to be for sale now, now that, now that the backers have actually gotten fulfillment. But uh, I would absolutely recommend picking this up. This is a, this is a great book uh, if you're into All for One, if you like Ubiquity, if you um, are into like the Thirty Years' War or that, that sort of thing. Great stuff. I mean, you, this isn't a standalone game. You will have to you know use something like All for One or... I suppose if if you want to use another you uh, if you have another game that uses the ubiquity system, you can you know essentially use the core rules with this. Um, but really, really good effort. It's a very impressive book, and I'm glad it came. So if you're back, it hope you get yours uh, soon as well. And I'm love the dice, man. <laughs> Talk to you later.